Philip Radisson, and we are at Abdeen Palace in Cairo. Awaiting us is President Anwar al-Sadat, President of the Arab Republic of Egypt. In November 1977, President Sadat, on his historic peace initiative, told the Israeli Knesset he had come to demolish a wall, a wall of rejection, fear, hallucination. Today, he and I are going to take a swing at another wall, a wall much older, far longer, and in some countries, just as high. Thank you so very much for the privilege of being with you today, Mr. Sadat. I will thank you. On the very day that I left for Egypt, the first copy of your book came off the press, uh -huh. and I've been entrusted with the honor of delivering it to you personally uh -huh. uh, in search of identity. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. That's an intriguing title. What did you mean about that, by that title? Well, it is this. Uh, uh, in search for my identity, really, I was searching the, uh, for the identity of my nation. Mm -hmm. And you shall see that everything happened here coincides with uh, the history of my uh, country in the, uh, uh, since the time I uh, uh, was born until this moment. You know, I've, it, uh, Egypt has had some very great kings. But uh, I don't know of any head of state of Egypt who has really laid down his life for his people as you have. I feel that it is a great responsibility uh, and that God that has put me in this position. So I must fulfill my mission. And every, every human being has got a mission. Uh -huh. The difference between the human being that lives even after his death and the other that ends by death. It is the mission. Everyone has got a mission. Yes. You know of the identification that we Christians have felt with Israel and that God is telling us without taking our one arm around Israel, we should put our other arm around you. Uh, but you Arabs have an identification with Israel too. They have lived among us, believe me. The only place in the world that there has never been any discrimination was in the Arab world where the Jews lived with us in complete harmony and on the same status. Uh, 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 this is historically known. In Europe it was different. In every place it was different. Well, it's rather interesting, isn't it, that in uh, Spain during the Moorish yes. rule, which of course was Muslim, the Jews prospered greatly yes. and then the Moors were ousted and the Inquisition took over, yeah. and, and uh, the yeah. Yeah. Jews had to leave the country. That's right. That's right. In, the, in the Islamic empire, uh, doctors, scientists, uh, professors, uh, in every way, the, the Jews are uh, lived with us, and they are in our history. More than that, our father is one. Uh, what do you mean when you say you have the same father? Would you just go Our into that? Our father is one Abraham. You know yes. Abraham yes. Uh -huh. uh, uh, has married Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, Israel, and, and he has a son, Israel. Uh, after that, he has married an Egyptian woman called Hagar. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, and he has Is Ishmael as his son, and he has put them there in Mecca where uh, uh, our holy, uh, uh, the holy house of God is there in Mecca, in the same place that Abraham put his wife Hagar and his son Ishmael. Well, Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Israel is the father of the Israelis. Well, they are brothers, Ishmael and Israel. I know that you're very much concerned about the wall between Israel and Egypt. But I think you're equally concerned about the wall between the Christian and the Muslim. Is that true? Well, uh, 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 fortunately, we don't have this wall here in Egypt. But, uh, yes, in some places, because maybe of literacy or so, or of uh, uh, maybe uh, historical reasons like the Crusades or so, mm -hmm. but, a true Muslim 
will never be a true Muslim without recognizes, recognizing Moses, the Bible, Christ. Now, you said there's no wall here, and I've been here for several weeks on two occasions, so I recognize the fact that I, there's, is practically no wall. And yet, uh, there is a rumor around in the United States that a uh, law has been passed here that uh, any Muslim who converts to another religion is uh, executed. Well, this is uh, uh, completely not true. Uh, this law uh, uh, was uh, proposed by uh, someone in the assembly, but it was refused here, but unfortunately the same thing happened, the same law there in Israel, and it was accepted by the Knesset there. My assembly didn't accept it here. Well, you know, Americans are extremely concerned about religious liberty because, yeah. after all, that was our reason for our founding in the first place. You mean a man like, for example, Billy Graham could come here and hold a, a, a crusade in a stadium or something like that? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Oh, that... uh, I am planning, uh, 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 whenever I, uh, whenever the Israelis withdraw from Sinai, uh, to build on the mountain, uh, Sinai mountain uh, that God spoke to Moses. Yes. Uh, it, this is in my land in Sinai. I'm going to build uh, a mosque, a church, a synagogue in one site and the prayers uh, to be prayed in the same moment by uh, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. I don't know if you're aware of how much ignorance there is about uh, the Muslim religion among us Christians, but uh, I grew up as a schoolboy thinking of uh, Allah as a very vindictive, cruel Muslim deity who uh, just rewarded with instant paradise the Muslim who died putting us infidels to the sword. So I almost felt as if there was a bounty on my head. Uh, you see, this, is, uh, uh, this has started with the Crusades. It has a background. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 every part of us uh, uh, condemns the other as inf infidels. The Christians uh, 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 accused the Muslims as infidels, and the Muslims accused the Christians as infidels. No. Quran is here. I had a very interesting discussion with uh, uh, Councillor Schmidt, uh, uh, the Prime Minister of West Germany. He is a very cultured and learned man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he also asked, and when I told him what is in Quran, really he was very astounded. The only difference between Christianity and Islam is this. In Quran we say this, God has taken Christ to, the, to, to, to heaven. I see. He was not killed. A man in his imitation was killed. In Islam we, we don't want, uh, uh, we, we, we were told here that uh, Christ uh, has uh, been elevated to God and not uh, and he has not been killed or uh, uh, crucified but an imitation of him this means that we have great uh, estimation to Christ to the extent uh, that God uh, didn't permit his crucifying but took him to heavens I guess this is the crux of our difference then, isn't it? Because for us, his death was atoning for our sins, you see? So that's, that's why the cross is the symbol of our, of our uh, faith. But, uh, so we disagree on that area. Do you believe that uh, Christ is coming back? It is stated in our Quran, before uh, uh, the day, uh, everyone will, uh, will recognize Christ. Is that right? Yes, yeah, in Quran. I wish you would just tell me what, how, what you think of God, how, how you see God, uh, not as the cruel, vindictive deity that we thought of him as. In fact, I didn't know quite until recently that Allah is the name for God uh, and that even the, the uh, Christians in your country 
worship the same, I mean, they have the same name, Allah. Yes, yes. I was, I was brought up in a village, as you know. Yes. I'm a villager. I've and done. I learned Quran before I went to the school. Uh, you were asking uh, how we envisage God. In spite of my knowing Quran and learning Quran, the men who have opened really the doors of faith for me in the cell 54 is an American author called Lloyd Douglas. Oh, yes. He, he's a, a Christian minister. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. He started to, to, to learn medicine, and then after that he left, and he uh, uh, became a priest. And wrote the robe, too. Yes. The robe, but read magnificent, magnificent obsession for him. Oh, yes. Anyone who doesn't have faith will have faith at all, uh, yes, at once. Right. And uh, uh, this man has taught me faith. Isn't that marvelous? Well, just tell us a little bit about your experience in cell 54, would you? Well, it is a very, uh, it is a very hard experience uh, because uh, uh, suddenly you found yourself between four walls, uh, uh, no book to read, no radio to hear the news, no newspaper to do, except just in a cell like this. And for one year and a half, before they permitted us to have newspapers and books, when we were permitted these books, Fortunately, the first book I read was Magnificent Obsession of Lloyd Douglas. Oh, is that And then right? continued after that in the same line. Uh, uh, in the cell 54, I found myself. Uh -huh. uh, I found myself and I found that through love, I can do miracles. Uh, you... Through hatred, uh, I am impotent. Uh, in fact, I think the expression you used was my heart was taken over by the love of the Lord of the universe. Right. Right. And let me tell you this. The most happiest six months that I lived or ever to live were the last six months in the cell. Well, now, uh, when you said your, your heart was taken over by the love of the Lord of the universe, was this something that just sort of oozed in on you or did it did happen in, in a particular time? No, it is part of my nature, but I couldn't recognize it before I was put in the cell. Uh, let me tell you this. In two places you will find yourself, either in prison or in war. Mm -hmm. You will find your true self. I found my true self because out of prison, uh, uh, like any other one, and because of this civilization, material civilization, and the man's needs and so, one is always preoccupied. He, he didn't have the time to meditate or to live inside himself. In this cell, you are. Either you, 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 you learn to live inside yourself or you will become mad. Because in four walls yes. with nothing to That's do. True. So, uh, I found myself. You know, I had an experience of being overwhelmed by the love of God. In fact, I could define it almost in exactly your terms of my heart was taken over by the love of the Lord of the universe. Mm. Uh, but when I tried to share it with people in my own a rather formal church, uh, they looked at me askance. And uh, I was wondering, did, did you find people responsive that would, to the experience you had? Or did sometimes did they think you were talking a foreign language. As I told you, when I had this uh, discussion with uh, Helmut Schmidt, uh, the counselor of uh, uh, West Germany, uh, uh, and because of the new facts that I told him in Quran, he told me, why don't you write a book? I promised to write a book on this, on the three religions. And they will be, uh, you will find that it is one religion according to Quran. Uh, I, told, I promised and he asked me uh, to write the foreword of this book. I gave him my word, and I shall be writing this book. Ch uh, Counselor uh, Helmut Schmidt of Germany will be writing the foreword of this book. Well, what happened as a result? You, you discovered there in the cell, I, I think you said that God wasn't just someone way up there, but he became your personal friend. Good friend. That's right. And uh, that... Uh, 
you, this was such a liberating experience. I think you said you were you were set free in that moment, right? From fear of man, right? And from uh, hatred. Hatred. And you can hate and man. from the material needs. I see. Mm -hmm. So it really was a liberating experience in prison, then, wasn't it? It? it is. It is. And as I told you, in two places only you can find yourself, either in prison or on war. As you know, we evangelicals have been, you might say we've had our arm around Israel and our back towards the Arab world. Uh, we've been so completely identified with Israel, first of all, because all of our origins are there, our prophets and apostles and Jesus Christ and the Bible is all of Jewish origin. Also, you know, we, we feel that uh, in the prophecies, do you remember Moses stood towards the close of his career uh, first on the Mount of Blessing, then the Mount of Cursing. And remember on the Mount of Blessing he told the Israeli people what would happen if they followed God and the Mount of Cursing, the curse that would befall them. And he said, uh, if you don't, uh, are not faithful to God, God will scatter you to the ends of the earth. And then, but then he's, he won't wash his hands of you. He will bring you back uh, to Israel. And, uh, and of course, when they started coming back, we saw this as a plan of God and when we uh, felt that the Arab world was not accepting the right of Israel to exist then we felt we had to take sides with Israel against the Arab world but when you at your historic peace initiative announced to the Israelis we accept your right to exist in peace and security uh, based on justice then suddenly you instead of being a menace as it were uh, we saw in you an instrument of God. I shall always consider my initiative, as I said, a sacred mission. And I shall always be proud of it, and I shall always be proud that this is the most important action that I have done during the whole of my life. Be mm -hmm. sure of this. Right now, there seems to be a, a stalemate, doesn't there, in your peace initiative? Uh, well, uh, uh, as I have already uh, stated before, unfortunately, really, we, uh, we are having two languages. No one can understand the other. No. From our side, after my initiative to Jerusalem, we have no uh, complexes at all, no bitterness, no hatred. And we have changed it completely well, you know, by my uh, initiative. I'd like to ask you some questions about uh, your faith. Uh, you look forward to the ultimate triumph of good. Yes, and, and love. Yes, yes. And it has been proven through 59 years that I lived until this moment. At the end, uh, 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 the good triumphs. What makes you think this? In view of the fact that the history of uh, endless warfare and conflict, what makes you think that good is going to triumph? Uh, because I have seen it, as I told you, as an experience myself during my life. I and see. through love, miracles can be achieved. My initiative itself to Israel, it is pure love instead of hatred, violence, bitterness, and so forth. But unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't understand the spirit that is behind it. Until this moment, uh, as I told you, they speak the same language they spoke before my initiative, while we have here changed it 100%. We have an, a complete new language. Love, uh, uh, acceptance among us, good neighborhood, in all the sense of good neighborhood. Uh, do you feel history is coming to a climax? Yes. Yes, I'm sure of this. Now, uh, it is the turn towards the morale, honesty, instead of what the civilization has created among us, mm -hmm. and the material needs that has really polluted all uh, our conceptions uh, and our relations mm -hmm. among ourselves all over the world. I think it is on the peak now, and we are returning again, and we, sh we shall return again. This is compulsory. We shall return again. Now, we evangelical Christians believe in a, 
in a organized intelligence, evil intelligence called a Satan. Do you do you believe that there is a, a Satan, or do you just think of the power of evil? Yes, for sure, I believe in Satan. I believe there is a Satan because it is stated in Quran here. We share a belief in the afterlife, of course, don't we? Right. Uh, you believe in paradise and uh, yes. and in hell. Too, and in you? hell, yes. Now, what determines who goes where? <laughs> when we say that God knows beforehand who will go to hell and who will go to paradise, because He is the Creator, mm -hmm. but it is for us. He has given us the brain and the mind and he has created us after his image and part of his soul in us it is stated in Quran and in the Bible so uh, it is for us to choose here is the wrong here is the right and here is the wrong according to this what we choose uh, we, we choose ourselves we shall be uh, uh, in the day uh, either in hell or in hell, in, in paradise. Uh, depending upon uh, uh, on what we... You have the choice. Uh, the choice uh, between uh, uh, heaven and hell? Uh, Everybody would choose between heaven. Between right and wrong. And on this, because God, as I told you, has created us after his image. When, when he created Adam, Adam our father, he has put uh, part of his soul I see. Well, this is something we really have in common that uh, we believe in the importance of the individual because right. man is created in the image of God. And, right. and this is one reason why we believe in human liberty, isn't it? That's a, that is what I'm telling you. Uh -huh. We have no differences among us at all. It is illiteracy or fanatism that has created this. Uh, the three religions are one. Now, let's see, your attitude towards uh, Muhammad is quite different from our attitude towards Christ, isn't it? Uh, then you don't believe uh, he was divine, do you? No, he's a human being. And yet, he's the highest authority figure next to God in your mind. Yes, isn't he? He, yes huh? he is a prophet that came from God, uh, that uh, was sent by God to uh, uh, teach us Islam. Now, do you believe he wrote the Quran? No. It was, it came to him from God. I see. Yes. In fact, you don't even like to be called Mohammedans, do you? you, you do you know that he was illiterate? Is that right? He was illiterate no, and Quran is master in the language. How could an illiterate man write a masterpiece in language? Mm -hmm. This is one of his, of his miracles. Because Muhammad didn't bring miracles like Jesus. Wrote. And we recognize it 100%. All what Jesus has done and uh, 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 miracles, it is in Quran. Oh, is that? Yes, yeah, in Quran. Well, now, I, I guess uh, we have quite a different concept. I think this would be the big difference between us because we see Jesus, of course, as, as a God who came down and shared our lot and became man, uh, the son of man, as he described himself, so that we could become the the sons of God, and so he is uh, at the right hand of God the Father in, in, in our faith. Well, we uh, differ on this. Yes. Mr. Sadat, there's one more thing I wanted to ask you about. I've heard uh, your wife has spoken of this mark in your head yeah. as where uh, evidence of your prayer life. Because of the prayers. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, we Christians think of Muslims as uh, repeating prayers. But I get the impression that you pray spontaneously to God, don't you, too? Five times a day. I see. When you pray that way, do you pray stated prayers, or do you sometimes just tell God what's ever on your heart? Well, uh, uh, there is a certain movement that one makes in prayer, as you know. Uh, you don't pray, for example, as you walk down a street or anything. You, uh, you feel that you must be in a position of reverence. Well, you can have this, but those five prayers are compulsory oh day. yes but uh, you make quite a bit of praying during the night though too don't you uh, yes I, you can do it whenever you can whenever you would like to do it or you, you have the time to do it uh, do you pray in your own words or do you, can you uh, can you pray in your own words or must you use stated prayers these are as i told you we recite quran uh, everything we say in the prayer is from quran you know 
in the United States at the founding of the nation, when the first Continental Congress made, there was a, a tremendous argument about states' rights versus the sovereignty of the federal government. And they reached an impasse, and it was uh, looked as if it was impossible to resolve it. And so the delegates began going home, and Mr. Benjamin Franklin said, gentlemen, we've tried every human recourse, and uh, it has failed. And so he said, why don't we get down on our knees and ask the help of God? And so they stopped their debate, and they got down on their knees, they prayed together for God's help, and the impasse was broken, and as a result, the United States of America was formed. Now, uh, we've just been talking about the common origin and the common heritage that Muslims, Christians, and Jews have. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all three religions could have the same day to pray for each other and for peace in the Middle East? And uh, uh, you and uh, Mr. Begin and Mr. Carter could each invite a, a year co-religionist, one representing a Jew, one uh, the Israeli, and one uh, the Christians, around the world to join on that day. And every synagogue and mosque and church in the world could be open on that day. W wouldn't that be exciting? Very exciting. Could I? And let me make this proposal. All right, fine. Would you, uh, could you read it out loud? The, mid, the Middle East is the birthplace of, uh, birthplace of Muslim, Christian, and Jewish religions, each having much in common with the other. Jews, Muslim, and Christians worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, and Moses, creator of the world and the source of all good. Believers of all three faiths are carrying out for a just and lasting peace. Four wars, endless debate, vast human effort has failed to produce this peace. Before God, the merciful, the compassionate, the wise, the good, the just, the best and wisest of men must confess proneness to error and need of his help. I have a proposal here to okay, make. Good. We agree to invite our nations and believers everywhere to join us in making the day our father Abraham oh, well. sacrificed his son as uh, an occasion uh, from which the three religions started. Let us make this day a day for prayer for Christians, Muslims and Jews to join hearts and voices in prayer for peace in the Middle East. May I add that this prayer every year in this same day I shall be doing myself on Mount Sinai with, uh, in, in the mosque and in the church and in the synagogue in the same vicinity. This is a historic moment. Uh, would you like to invite uh, Mr. Carter and Mr. Bagan to join you in this? Sure, shall be inviting them. And the Pope, Paul, I have asked him this when I met him last February on my way back from the States. Uh, I have promised to invite him myself personally to this prayer. Isn't that exciting? Yes.